All right, let's, uh, let's analyze a force problem here that has a little bit more to it than what you might be used to, okay? As we read this, let's see if we can recognize before we start what this added feature is we have to account for. So this says a crate is pushed across a horizontal surface, so this thing's moving across horizontally, by a person whose arms are at a 42 degree angle. So I drew a vector here that represents their arms pushing along this crate, but they're not just pushing it directly horizontal, they're pushing down on it as well. So part of their force is pushing it downward into the floor, and part of it is pushing horizontally. And they're pushing with 230 newtons, but not all 230 newtons are helping it accelerate forward. Some of that, that force is actually pushing it into the floor. That's the major difference here. Okay, we have an angle of 42 degrees. We got a coefficient of friction of 0.18 and we have a mass for the crates. We have all this data to take care of. What I really want to analyze is that extra force of the person pushing downward somewhat, along with their horizontal movement, how does that affect all of the other aspects here? Okay, so let's start by drawing our free body diagram and just analyze what's going on. Okay. So we know that we have the force of weight, gravity, mass times the acceleration due to gravity is pulling this thing straight towards the earth. Okay, we know that's true. We also know that we have a normal force that is supporting it. And typically, we say that the weight and the normal force are usually equal in magnitude to each other because this box is not hovering up and it's not dropping down. It's staying at the same level, which means whatever force we have up here must be canceling out the force down here. Now, that's what we typically say, but we have this other thing involved. Part of what's going on is this person is pushing downward some with some of their own force. So we actually have two forces that are pushing downward. We have the person pushing downward somewhat, and then we have the weight pulling it downward, and the, the table or the floor or whatever that surface is has to support against both of these. So it has to exert enough force to overcome this and this. And so here we have two downward forces and only one upward force. Now if you think about this in real life, if I push down on this, I'm going to be squeezing those surfaces together even harder and I'm going to be increasing the friction. We're going to see mathematically where that comes from. Now, I'm going to say that definitely there is a, an applied force that's horizontal, but it's not all 230 newtons. It's a chunk of that 230 newtons, a component. And then there's a certain amount of friction that's holding it back. So our drawing looks very similar to other ones, but in this case, we have an extra downward force coming from the person who's actually doing the pushing, and that has to be correctly accounted for. Let's start with the trig here. Let's see if we can get that out of the way so we know each component. So I'm going to start by just going, all right, we've got this is an angle of 42 degrees. We have a vector of 200, oops, 230 newtons. Okay, we need to really find the vertical component and the horizontal component. Okay, once we find those components, we'll be treating them independently. We won't really use the 230 anymore. So if I were to do my trig, this right here would be 230 times the sine. The blue one's going to be the opposite side times the sine of 42. Okay, and I did this ahead of time, and I found out that that blue one would equal 154 newtons. Then for the red one, I did the cosine of 42 times 230. And this one equals, looks like 171. So once I've got that, I'm pretty much going to ignore this. I don't really need to have that information anymore because I'm going to be dealing with the horizontal forces and the vertic vertical forces separately. Okay, now, what I would like to do is I would like to make some adjustments using this red and blue to my overall free body diagram. So first of all, the red, that is my horizontal force. That's the amount of this 230 newtons that's actually being applied horizontally. It's 171. That's the only horizontal force that this person is applying. So this right here ends up being 171 newtons. That's where the horizontal component goes into this diagram. Let's take a look at the other side now. Friction is gonna be holding it back somewhat, we have some information to help us figure that out, but we got to interpret some other things as well. 
I want you to pay special attention to the 154 newtons. That represents how much of this force is being pushed downward where we're actually pushing something into the floor. So there's two vertical forces here that are going downward. We have the weight pulling it down, and then we have 154 newtons being pushed down additionally by the person pushing it. That's something that's different. Usually we have several forces acting, but here we have two downward forces, and one of them comes from the person who's actually trying to push it sideways, that just some of their energy is pushing it down. Now, let's take care, take care of some actual computation. Mass times gravity. We got 35 kilograms times 9.8 for the acceleration due to gravity. So the actual weight of this thing is going to be 343 newtons. So we just have to get a number up there we can take a look at. Uh, what else? We should probably interpret the normal force. Now, this is the part that's sometimes hard to recognize until you get into it a ways. This normal force, in order for this box to not be going downward, this surface must be pushing back with the same and equal amount of force that both of the downward forces are applying. So the normal force here is actually a lot bigger than just 343. It's 343 combined with 154. So I have to actually add those together, and I get a normal force of 497 newtons. So I'm going to write 343 plus 154 equals 497 newtons. So even because this thing is not moving up, it's not moving down, the floor, the ground, the table, whatever that surface is, has to be exerting enough force to overcome both of these and cancel them out. Okay. So I've got the normal force there. Now we've got to take a look at the friction. All right? and we have a formula for friction, which is force of friction equals mu times the normal. But notice, here's mathematically where that extra friction comes from. Our normal force is much bigger than the weight because we're pushing these surfaces together. We're adding that extra pressure and squeezing those together, so we actually have a much bigger normal force. That's why friction is not calculated just based on the weight, it's calculated based on the surface that's pushing back against that, that supporting surface. And we're gonna have to multiply that by a mu of 0.18. So if I do that, if I make the force of friction equal to 0.18 times 497, that's going to give me my frictional force, and in this case, it appears that that is going to be 89.5, 89.5 newtons. So I got 89.5 newtons of friction holding this back. Why is friction going this way? Only because I chose to have my applied force horizontally going that way. Friction is always impeding that, that motion. It's always resisting it. Okay, I got pretty much everything filled in. Now comes the, the fun part. This is where you have to make sure that as you work through this, you set up Newton's second law. And right now, we see that this, this box is not moving down, it's not moving up. We know this is equal to this. But what we don't know is how these relate. So we're going to look just at the horizontal scenario here. And we need to basically find out a formula for net force. Okay, what are the, what's the total effect of these forces that are all happening in, in opposite directions horizontally? And it looks like we only have two of them. We got 171 newtons and 89.5 newtons holding it back. So it's going to be 171 minus 89.5. And you know that there's a lot of ways we can show that. We can add the forces and just make this a negative force. A lot of ways to show the same thing. But you have to make up this formula, and that's different for every problem. Okay, you have to somehow resolve the forces that are all happening in these opposite directions. We don't have to do it with these because we already did. It's not moving up or down. We're trying to figure out if it's moving left or right. So if I, if I add those together, I'm sorry, subtract those, I'm going to get a total force, a net force, of 81.5 newtons. So this box, even though there's lots of things happening, it's really just feeling a total force of 81.5 newtons in this direction, the positive direction. Okay, and we have to figure out what that does to its motion. So you also know, you have another formula for net force, Newton's second law is net force equals ma, mass times the acceleration. Well, I'm just gonna put mass times the acceleration right here. ma equals 81.5. And all I have to do is divide by m, and it'll tell me how fast that accelerates. Where's my m? It's right here. We have, we've had it since the beginning. 
So if I take 81.5 divided by the 35 kilograms, this tell, tells me that it will accelerate at 2.33 meters per second squared. And that's a positive value, so it's going to accelerate in what we had designated as the positive direction or the direction with the more net force going that way. Okay. This was holding it back. So why the purpose of the blue again? The blue was the, extra, the, the component force that's being pushed down along with the weight. Those two things added together produce a bigger normal force, which produces a bigger amount of friction because you're squeezing the two surfaces together. So all of this stuff tells the same story. And this is just one example of how to account for some forces at angles depending on the setup and the overall parameters of the problem. Think about it the other way around. What if this person was not pushing down, but they had a rope going and they were pulling it over their shoulder? If that were the case and they were pulling it this direction, now instead of pushing extra force into the ground, they would actually be lifting up with a component of force and relieving some of that pressure, which would decrease the friction. So this is one of those things that you just have to take piece by piece. Not every single problem is exactly the same. Some of the features are, but you have to do all the analysis for that specific problem, figure out all the forces that are going on, and then you've got to make up a net force equation that fits that scenario. And that's one example of kind of an advanced level sort of force analysis that's a little bit higher than maybe what you've been used to.